In this video, we discuss learning outcome number two, which is all about determining whether there is a linear correlation between variables using critical values and the linear correlation coefficient. Now, at this point in our course, we have not yet talked about hypothesis testing, and that means we can't talk about correlation and regression with much depth yet. So in lesson 2.4, I'm just gonna give you some rules of thumb. We're gonna talk about all of this pretty qualitatively, um, but the details and the reasons why we're doing what we're doing and why I'm saying what I'm saying will be more clear when we get to chapter 10 and we have the background to understand all the statistics that underpine this um, idea. So um, let's talk about uh, linear correlation coefficients. We looked at a picture like this. This is a scatter plot in the last video. It's a scatter plot of waist circumference versus arm circumference. And we said, just by looking at this picture, I can tell that as waist circumference goes up, arm circumference tends to go up at, as well. But you might say, well, how do you measure that? Like, what's a good measure of whether there is a relationship between those two variables. I'm just looking at a graph and saying, yeah, that kind of looks like a line. Doesn't seem technical enough um, for, for people who are interested in math and statistics and really want to measure something. Um, we can measure this correlation with what's called the um, linear correlation coefficient R. Now remember, we've got a linear correlation here. We have this distinct line pattern. Um, uh, waist circumference increasing as arm circumference increases. Um, so we have a linear correlation, but we'd like to be able to measure the strength of that correlation. And we can do so with the linear correlation coefficient r. This measures the strength of the relationship between the two variables. Now the value of r always lies between negative one and one inclusive. r will equal one if every single point in our scatter plot lies on a line. So if you were to draw a line through two points, um, in your scatter plot, every single point in the scatter plot would lie on that line, and that line would have a positive slope if r is equal to 1. Now, if every single point in your scatter plot lies on a line and that uh, line has a negative slope, the r value will be negative 1. Now, if the uh, data tend to um, be near a line, like the data that we were looking at for arm circumference versus waist circumference, um, then r is not going to be equal to negative 1 or 1, but it's going to be close to either negative 1 or 1. Um, it'll be close in absolute value to 1. Um, if r is close to negative 1 or 1, there appears to be a correlation. As one variable goes up, the other one tends to go up, or as one variable goes down, the other one tends to go down. Now, if r is close to 0, that means there are data values everywhere. You see uh, plot or points plotted all over the place um, and there does not appear to be a linear correlation. So here's a, another example. The question is, is there a correlation between shoe, uh, shoe print lengths and heights? So you've got the height of a person in centimeters and then you also have the length of their shoe print also in centimeters. Now we only have data, uh, five data points um, in this set. So if we graph them, we're only going to graph five points. And this is what that graph looks like. Now when you look at this graph, it's not at all obvious whether there is a correlation between shoe print length and height. Um, but we might be interested in that. And so if we want to find out if there is evidence of a correlation between these two variables, then we only have five points we might calculate that linear correlation coefficient r. Now we're gonna talk about the formula for that when we get to chapter 10, but for now in this chapter, we're just gonna use technology in order to come up with that linear correlation coefficient r. So if you use a program like StatDisk and you do a little bit of data entry, um, if, if you use it in the right way, you can get StatDisk to give you back this information. Um, one of the pieces of information that they may give you is this correlation coefficient r, r equals 0 0.5912691. That's in the red box. And then we also have these critical values of r. Now, if we want to determine whether there is a, a correlation between two variables, we look at the absolute value of r and we compare it to the absolute value of those critical values. If 
our linear correlation coefficient um, has an absolute value that is less than the absolute value of the critical R value. We say that there's no evidence of a correlation. Otherwise, we say that there is evidence of a correlation between the two variables. Now, in this case, according to the output of StatDisk, when I'm using that sample size, those five pieces of data that we just looked at a couple of slides ago, the correlation coefficient is 0 0.591. And the critical R values are about plus and minus 0 0.88. So the absolute value of R is 0.59, and the absolute value of those critical values is 0.88. Um, since 0.59 is less than 0.88, there does not appear to be a correlation between the variables. Now, typically the way this is done is we, um, if we're using critical values to um, determine whether there is evidence of a correlation between variables, we would draw a number line like this, this number line at the bottom, and we would label the, critic, the positive and negative critical values. So we've got a positive critical value of 0.88 and a negative critical value of negative 0.88. Then we also wanna plot that uh, correlation coefficient R. And if that R value is in between the negative and positive um, critical values, well, then there's no evidence of a correlation or there does not appear to be evidence of a correlation. Um, if the absolute value of R is greater than the absolute value of the critical values, that means our R value is going to be either in this interval on the far left or this interval on the far right. This interval on the far left, we call it the left tail. And we'll talk more about that later. I know it might seem like it's very similar to that language that we were using when we were looking at the skewed distributions. Um, and all of that will come, come back and it'll make more sense when we talk about hypothesis testing in chapter nine. Um, but this, this interval on the left is called the left tail. This interval on the right is called the right tail. If our R value, that correlation coefficient, lies in the left tail or the right tail, so that it's not in between the two critical values, then we would say, there is evidence to suggest that there's a correlation between these two variables. So here's another example. We've got car weight and fuel consumption. Now, they don't actually give us the data this time. It says for a set of weights in pounds and highway fuel consumption amounts in miles per gallon for a sample of seven car models. So they've got um, different car models, they found their weights, and then the highway fuel consumption amounts um, the linear correlation coefficient between that, the weight of the car and its highway fuel consumption um, for all seven cars, um, the linear correlation co coefficient was negative 0 0.987. Then it says, use the table available to find the critical values of R. Then determine whether there is evidence of a correlation between the weights of cars and highway fuel consumption. Okay, so First thing I want to do is look at this problem statement and pick out anything that's important, anything that is given. So we were told that there are seven car models and that we have a linear correlation coefficient R of negative 0 0.987. So we know the value of R and we know that we've got, if we've got seven car models, we've got seven pairs of data. Um, so I'm going to use the fact that I've got seven pairs of data and this table of critical values of R that was given to us to determine the critical values of R. So I go to n equals seven, and I look at this critical value of R. It says 0 0.754, but we always want to think of that as plus or minus 0 0.754. So our critical values are negative 0 0.754 and positive 0 0.754. Now, one way to determine whether there is evidence of a linear correlation between the variables is to plot those critical values on a number line. So I've plotted negative 0 0.54 and positive 0 0.54 on a number line. And now I also want to plot that linear correlation coefficient, that negative 0 0.987 is right over there. 
since that linear correlation coefficient r is in the left tail, and that's below that negative critical value. It's outside of that range uh, between the two critical values. It's on the tails. If it's in either one of the tails, there is sufficient evidence for a linear correlation between the variables. Since R is in the left tail below the negative critical value, we have evidence of a correlation. If R had been in the right tail, uh, with a critical or with a value that was greater than this positive critical value, um, there would be evidence of a correlation. If R is in between, then we don't have sufficient evidence of a correlation. Um, so that's how that works. Remember, R is a measure of that linear relationship uh, between the two variables. If R is close to one or close to negative one, we would say there's evidence or it, it's, it makes sense to, to assume or not, maybe not assume, it makes sense to um, think that there may be a linear correlation between the variables. And if R is close to zero, there is no linear cor correlation. Um, in practice, we don't just say close to negative one or one and close to zero. We use these critical values to determine whether the R value is close to zero or not. The critical values define what we mean by close to zero. So if, we, if the R value is in between the negative and the positive critical value, we say that that's close to zero and there's no evidence of a correlation. If the R value is larger in absolute value than the absolute value of R critical, that means it lies, the R value lies in one of the tails, either on the left or on the right. And if R lies in one of the tails, that means there is evidence of a linear correlation between the variables.